Personal Finance PowerPoint presentation, exclusive listing. Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information can be found at Investopedia exclusive listing, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This is by Gene Folger, updated September 30th, 2021. What is an exclusive listing? So we're thinking about the home sale type of process, how to get that thing listed. It's seeking help to do that and focusing in on the exclusive listing. An exclusive listing is a type of real estate listing agreement in which property seller appoints and specifically authorizes one that's the key word one real estate broker to act as the seller's sole agent so we're hiring one broker within our contract to help support us being acting as our agent in the home sales process as opposed to or by contrast with uh, in an open listing the seller retains the right to employ any number of brokers as agents. So there's going to be pros and cons as to whether or not you want the exclusive listing, you want the one broker to be acting on your behalf, or do you want the open listing where you can have a number of brokers possibly. How an exclusive listing works. A listing agreement is a contract under which a property owner as principal authorizes a real estate broker as agent to find a buyer for the property on the owner's terms, a service for which the owner pays a commission. So we got the seller, the seller wants to sell a home, they're going to be hiring something, someone to act and make certain decisions on their behalf with regards to the specific item in a similar way as a lawyer might do in, in like a court kind of situation, hiring an agent to act on their behalf. In this case, they're going to be making decisions with regards to the listing and so on with the sales process. So we've got that broker uh, in, in there for that. And obviously there's going to be a form of payment that is going to be within the contract as well notice every time we have an agent involved in this way we still always have to consider the agency issue or problem that being that the agent should be acting on the behalf of the seller but clearly the agent's interests although somewhat aligned are not completely aligned because the agent is is interested is motivated from a financial perspective on on the, what they're going to sell it for and the and the seller might have you know other interests involved so obviously you know from a financial standpoint you got to think about what the interests are for the particular agent so to understand so for example you could imagine situations where the agent would want you to increase the sales price for example they could if they wanted you to renovate the house in such a way that it's going to cost you more than the increase in the sales price that they would receive obviously the agent would benefit at a higher sales price and they wouldn't be involved in the renovations that would cost you money so you could see from a financial perspective you could have situations where you have this kind of agency problem so to understand how an exclusive listing works it's helpful to first consider open listings in an open listing the seller retains the right to employ numerous brokers as agents the seller is obligated to pay a commission only to the broker who successfully produces a ready, willing, and able buyer. So if you have the open listing, then you've got multiple, you could possibly have multiple agents that are going to be helping or looking to sell the home in order to get a piece of the commission, right? And that would be one method to go about it. If the seller finds a buyer without the help of any of the brokers, without the help of any of the brokers, then the seller is not ob obligated to pay a commission to anyone. So if you're the one that basically finds the buyer yourself, then you didn't really have a broker that was taking uh, on that capacity. Oftentimes, of course, the broker is someone that's going to help out with the listing process uh, on the seller side of things. So an exclusive list, uh, listing works differently. In an exclusive listing, only one broker is specifically authorized to act as the ex exclusive agent of the seller. So now you've got one broker that is acting on the seller's behalf and you're dependent basically on that on that one broker. And so if it's someone that you are working closely with and, and you trust uh, well, then you could have a good situation there. But obviously you have the pros and cons between the single broker and possibly multiple brokers that are all kind of competing to try to sell the home. So that means one broker has the sole right to market, show, and sell the property. Other brokers are excluded from trying to sell property while agreement is active. 
So you got one broker that has the exclusive right to be acting on your behalf as the seller and possibly taking more aligned steps and have, have more you know ability to know exactly what you're looking for within the process as opposed to having multiple brokers kind of in a competitive type of situation that are competing to find a suitable buyer competing of course for the commission on the excel an exclusive listing can be simple for the seller in that there's only one broker to work with however an exclusive listing can result in less exposure for the property and in turn fewer interested buyers so clearly you have some pros and cons with the exclusive listing if you're working with one person then working with that one person could be a benefit because you can work well with one individual as opposed to having multiple individuals that you may not you know obviously you don't have as much background with multiple brokers but you're going to get less exposure you would think than if you had multiple brokers basically competing for the commission so once again an exclusive listing can be simpler for the seller in that there's only one broker to work with that could be an easier situation however an exclusive lifting can result in less exposure for the property and in turn fewer interested buyers so types of exclusive listings there are two types of exclusive listings number one exclusive agency listing one broker is appointed to act as the exclusive agent for the seller so remember an agent kind of situation most people probably think of like a, a lawyer type of situation as as the primary agent you know in your mind the lawyer representing a client in a court case for example but you have a similar situation in certain areas you give the agency to someone else to act on your behalf in certain areas such as in this case the selling of of the home so you got the one broker is appointed to act as the exclusive agent and in, in that particular realm as opposed to basically having multiple people uh, trying to compete for that item the seller retains the right to sell the property with no obligation to the broker so the seller could sell uh, the property however the seller is obligated to pay a commission to the broker if the broker is the uh, pr procuring cause of the sale so if the broker does the job which you would expect generally the broker would be uh, incentivized and good at and determined to do which would be to find the the buyer then of course you'd be contractually required to pay the broker so however the seller is obligated to pay commission to the broker if the broker is the procuring cause of the sale number two exclusive right to sell listing this is the most commonly used real estate contract with this type of listing agreement one broker is authorized as the seller's sole agent and has exclusive authorization to represent the property while the listing agreement is in effect the broker receives a commission no matter who sells the property so that you see it's a bit more uh, stringent there and most of the time obviously if you're working with a broker you're probably dependent on the broker to be doing this type to be listing the property and so on and so forth it's it's not you know you might be in a situation where you're going to hire one broker and then you're going to try to compete with the your own broker basically and sell it uh, yourself as well but I mean, oftentimes you would think that uh, you'd be pretty reliant on the broker if you're hiring an exclusive broker to do that job. So special considerations. In Canada, an exclusive listing is what uh, is referred to in the US as a pocket listing or off market listing. A single broker handles this type of listing, which is not made available to the general public or listed in the multiple listing service, the MLS. Instead, the broker tries to sell the home to their existing private network. So in that case, you're not gonna list the home as you generally would on the multiple listing service, but you're gonna try to work with your own networks in order to sell it. So sellers who ask for a pocket listing generally do so to maintain privacy, e.g. the rich and famous, or to sell to a specific person.